how overflows mindfulness the power from within mindfulness is the key to not letting the mind take you over instead simply to watch it to observe it this process is known as mindfulness or witnessing with this you will become aware that constant stream of thoughts and feelings is separate from you it is like a river flowing by which you can observe just as you might sit by the side of the river and notice the flotsam that is carried along its stream in this way you are not suppressing your thoughts but you are also not getting engaged in them some people say i want to meditate but my mind is so strong in fact it is just your getting engaged with it that creates the feeling and which energizes the thoughts withdraw your cooperation and you will disempower them not only do we get engaged with thoughts we become identified with them as well so much so that we cannot imagine being without the mind and the reality is we cannot only really be really be without it by and by as you continue practicing mindfulness you will have an understanding that you are not your thoughts really thoughts are manufactured by your mind but they are not you you are the subject the observer and your thoughts or feelings are the objects that which is being observed once you have this realization that you are not your thoughts nor any of the feelings nor physical sensations you do not need to be a victim of your own mind or your body any more there are two worlds samashti and mindfulness both are of buddhist origin to notice our actions our thoughts and our feelings without being lost in them without being identified with them that we forget ourselves as other than them for example we think we are achievements or failures our clever or our un uncharitable thoughts our jealousy and our lovingness samashti can be translated as right remembering the recalling of who we are none of those passing aspects but a being of awareness mindfulness is something of a misnomer and can be confusing because the mind is made up of unconsciousness as well as consciousness so technically being mindful and compasses both those aspects consciousness and unconsciousness the zen expression for our natural state of being for awareness seems closer the mark no mind there is much difference between awareness 
and witnessing. Witnessing is an act. You are doing it. The ego is there. So the phenomena of witnessing is divided between the subject and the object. The subject is witnessing or observing the objects. Witnessing is a relationship between subject and object. Awareness is absolutely devout of any subjectivity or objectivity. There is no one who is witnessing in awareness. There is no one witnessing in awareness. Also, there is no one to be witnessed. Awareness is total act wherein both subject and object dissolve into one another, integrated. Neither the subject nor the object are related in it. Both are dissolved. So awareness does not mean that anyone is aware, nor does it mean that anything is being attended to. Awareness is total, total subjectivity and total objectivity as one single phenomena. Awareness is total and totality means total subjectivity and total objectivity as a single phenomena. While in witnessing the duality exists between subject and object, aware and witnessing is a doing, is an act. Awareness is non-doing. Witnessing implies a doer. But through witnessing, awareness is possible. Through witnessing, awareness is possible because witnessing means that it is a conscious act. It is an act, but conscious. You can do something and be unconscious as well. This is what we do. You can do something and be unconscious. Indeed, our ordinary activity is unconscious. However, if you become conscious in it, it becomes witnessing. So from ordinary unconscious activity to awareness, there is a gap that can be filled with witnessing. As such as we are, we engage in our thoughts or feelings unconsciously. When you move from unconscious effort to conscious effort, you are moving through witnessing. So from ordinary unconscious activity to awareness, there is a gap and that gap is filled by witnessing. Witnessing is a technique, a method towards awareness. Witnessing is a technique, a method towards awareness. But it is not awareness. Remember this. Witnessing is a technique, a method towards awareness, but it is not awareness. But as compared to ordinary activity, unconscious activity, it is a higher step. As compared to ordinary activity, unconscious activity, it is a higher step. Something has changed now. The activity that was up to now unconscious has become conscious. Activity, the thought is an activity, feeling is an activity, 
and out of the interaction between feeling and thought the actions arise these have been unconscious and this is replaced by consciousness something has changed now activity has become the feeling the thoughts the activity has become conscious unconsciousness has been replaced by consciousness but something more still has to be changed this is a step you have moved from unconscious feeling from unconscious thought process from unconscious activity to conscious feeling conscious thought and conscious activity a major change has taken place but something more has to be changed and what is that the activity has to be replaced by inactivity in witnessing you are moving from unconscious effort allowing the feeling thoughts and action to happen unconsciously to conscious effort conscious and then the other step is the activity has to become now the inactivity you are not doing anything that is the activity has to be replaced by inactivity and that will be the second step second step where witnessing how witnessing is transformed or leads you to the state of awareness this totality of everything this is important to understand in its steps the activity which is an important aspect of witnessing has to be replaced by inactivity and that is a second step in the process of movement from witnessing to awareness enough for now